Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Last week we finished with the second chapter of the book of Philippians. We're moving into the third chapter tonight. Um, you know, and, and kind of interesting, Paul gets to the third chapter and says, Finally, my brother. And he's got two more chapters to go. But, um, and, 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 um, for the rest, you know, here, and, and the rest of what I had to say to you is this, okay? So Paul says, you know, the rest I had to say to you are finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. Well, we're supposed to rejoice in the wind when it's not rejoicing time. Even when you don't feel like rejoicing, it's time to rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, to write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Now, what he's saying here is, I'm, you know, I've said some things to you before, but I'm going to say them again. I've said some things to you before, and I'm going to say them again. Everybody say, it's okay to hear it again. So, and again, and again, and again. And this is the scripture that never ends. It just goes on. I'm sorry. The word of God, we could be the lamb chop song, you know. The word of God never ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. Hallelujah. How many remember that? Yeah, lamb chops. All right. He said, listen to this. For me to write to you or to say the same things to you again is um, not grievous to me. As a matter of fact, for you it's safe to hear it over again. Okay? See, but sometimes people think, well, I've heard that before, and they want to move on to something else. Can I say this? Just because you heard it before didn't mean you got it before. Going to get us some bobbleheads out there. Just because you've heard it doesn't mean you got it. All right? How many, how many ever heard stuff in, in, in math class you didn't get? You heard it before, but you didn't get it. For a lot of people, especially when you got the geometry and trigonometry. You know? You know, my wife is a, is, has a B.A. in math, B.A. in computer science, but she detests with extreme passion geometry. Now, here's the thing. The people who love geometry don't dig algebra. It's because her brain's wired that way, okay? You know, so the geometry people hate algebra. The algebra people hate geometry. It's just the way the brain works. Shannon is weird. She likes both. Hallelujah. But, you know, so Paul's saying here, it's safe for you to hear it again. And so he goes on here and says this, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, and beware of the concision. Now, what you got here is, Paul gives a, a, gives a threefold warning. There are three, there's, there's people who are coming in and doing things in the church, and first of all, he calls them dogs. We're just in love, everybody. Not if they're dogs. Do you understand that the concept of the love of God does not mean you condone and you put up with and you accept everything other people are doing? That's stupid. As a matter of fact, that's really not love. If somebody came in and started hitting my kids, my, I would not go, well, you can't hit them back because you love them. I'd take a baseball bat and knock them upside the head because I have an obligation to protect my children. So love does not mean you put up with everything. Okay, and as a matter of fact, the, the need of the church, he's, Paul says, beware of dogs. D-O-G-S, dogs. Everybody say dogs. Now, he labeled them this way because their characteristics of what they were doing would, would resemble wild packs of scavengers roaming the streets, causing havoc wherever they went and attacking people. In other words, there, it's just like stuff that's going on in the world today. There's gonna, you know, you've got churches now, people coming in, they're wanting to force the churches to do things or force Christian businesses to do things. They're dogs. Okay, they're attacking people. They're, you know, and Paul says, beware of dogs. See, we get this idea that they, if we just, now listen to me, can I say something here? People take the scripture out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 13, verses 4 through 8, which says, love never fails. And they say, if I just love them, it won't fail. I've seen people go to hell with people loving them. It doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean if you just love them, everything's going to turn out exactly right. Okay? 
love doesn't lose its hope. It doesn't lose. It doesn't fade in its belief. It you know. And I, love always believes the best. That's King James. That's not even accurate. Uh, really, what the Greek says. The Amplified really brings that. It says love is ever ready to believe the best. It wants to, but let's face it, if, they're hit, if they got a gun, they're about to pull the trigger, it doesn't mean they really don't want to pull the trigger. Amen? Well, they really don't mean to pull the trigger. Yes, they do. Okay? So we have to get, you know, some understanding. Dog, he labeled them dogs because, they, you know, they were causing havoc. Second, he called them evil workers. Everybody say evil workers. They were actively opposed to the gospel. So they're evil workers. How do people read Paul's writings and come out with such a skewed view of what he says? And then the third thing he says, he calls them the concision. Now, this word is rooted out of circumcision. Okay? But the concision means this. The word actually means to mutilate. Okay? And so what they were doing, they weren't of the circumcision where the circumcision cut the covenant, but it was actually what they were doing was mutilating the gospel. And mutilating, and so he used this word because in reference to circumcision, see, you know, we had Judaizers in the church and they were going around, they were trying to cause all kind of trouble. But he called it concision, and, um, which re they were only mutilated. In other words, their mechanical, unscriptural approach to the important rite of circumcision reduced it to a mere laceration of the body. And so he says, they weren't even, they're not of the circumcision, they're the concision, they're mutilators. Hello. So you got people coming into church who are mutilating the, who are mutilating, uh, the gospel. I'm going to tell you, some of this teaching on grace is, a, is, is concision. It's mutilating the gospel. It's teaching things that are not accurate scripturally in the overall, con, overall uh, parameter of the entire counsel of God's word. Well, because I'm under grace, I can, I can fornicate, and it's okay. I'm still going to be blessed. So, see, that, that's concision. You have mutilated the truth of the circumcision of the heart. See, we're not, we, uh, we which are not circumcised in the flesh, but of the heart. We've been circumcised in the heart. Not so that you can do whatever you want to do. You've been circumcised in the heart so you can do what God wants you to do. So you can do God's will. So you can follow after God. And to teach otherwise is to mutilate the gospel of the circumcision of the heart. Hello. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, let's move. Let's, so, he says to beware of the dogs. The scavengers are causing trouble. Beware of evil workers, those who are actively opposed to the truth of God's word. And then of the concision, those who are mutilating the true doctrines of Christ where we've been circumcised in the heart you cut away the stony heart. The stony heart's been cut away. You have a heart of flesh. And it is so you can pursue God with all of your heart. Amen? All of your soul and all of your strength. You pursue him and you, you're imitators of God. You're holy even as he is holy. Praise the Lord. We walk after the Lord and we walk, in, in the, and we walk to walk and be a representative of the image of Christ in us. All right? Next verse, he says here, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Now, the thing here is, the Greek word here for circumcision is the one used that Paul used in reference to um, not physical circumcision, okay, but, but the circumcision of the heart. This is what he uses here. He uses a Greek word that, that bears out or witnesses or, or, or carries out for the circumcision of the heart. He also uses that over in Romans 2, 25 and 29. He talks about that. He says, so he says here, we are the ones who have been circumcised in the heart. Okay? Which worship God. How? In the spirit. See, we, we, we have to understand that when we get born again and we give, we give um, and we're no longer... Remember, I think that we were doing a study earlier, earlier uh, in, on the Wednesday nights in one of the books, and I may have been one of the Corinthians books, but it says that we walk in, the, uh, uh, in newness of life, that we're called to walk in newness of life, okay? And then one of our, our other translations, Weymouth or, or Weiss or somebody says, we're called to walk in a whole new plane altogether, okay? What's that mean? We don't walk according to the dictates of the flesh. We say it's in the governance of the flesh, now, the interesting thing is the word flesh here doesn't mean this. It means the, it means the, the fallen, unregenerated nature. Okay? 
We, we are not called to walk according to the un, unregenerated nature that we had before. Now, we got people die, you know, we got people say all kinds of things. I grew up Pentecostal, I die daily, you know. Well, I, I, get, I get where they got some of that from, but they, they never got to the point that they were living out of the new man, you know. Um, but see, we're not to live according to the nature of the fallen man. We're regenerated. So how we, we don't worship God uh, in, in, in governed by flesh or the, the unregenerated. We worship God in the spirit. We worship God out of the recreated human spirit. Now you may dance physically. You may shout. You may run. But it's coming out of, it's birthed out of the regenerated man, the spirit. So we worship God in the spirit. Everybody say in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. I rejoice in my redemption. I rejoice in what Jesus did for me. Can you say amen? We rejoice in what God's done for us. Hallelujah. And it's through Jesus Christ. We don't rejoice in the flesh. We have no confidence in our ability. Remember the old unregenerated man always wanted to do it himself. He had a fix for everything. He could figure it out. He could do it. I mean, you know, Frankie. Frankie said, you know, I did it my way. And then Elvis came along and did it again. He said, I did it my way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Are y'all here? You know? No, you don't do it your way. That's where we get some of the craziest stuff in the church today. People say, well, you know, I believe I can do this and be a Christian. I can do that and be a Christian. I can... No, 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 no. What does the word say you can do and be a Christian? I don't have any confidence in the flesh. Well, I talked to one guy, I was witnessing to a guy a number of years ago, actually uh, about 34 years ago, 35 years ago, well, somewhere in that time frame. And he was telling me, yeah, me and I was witnessing to him, he said, yeah, me and my maker, we got us a deal. I'm thinking, yeah, you don't have a deal with your maker? He didn't cut deals. Hello? He, he set it in motion how it had to be and then told you what you had to do to qualify. You don't get to rewrite the book. Now, I would like to rewrite Microsoft's Windows. You yeah? know? Hello. Wish somebody else had gotten a hold of that software system besides the guy that did. <laughs> you know? Praise the Lord. Anyway. But I don't get to rewrite it, so I don't get, I, I got to function with it how it is. I mean, you just can't go in there and say, well, I want to run Mac on my Microsoft. But it don't work that way. I want to run I, I, iOS 9 on my uh, IBM computer. Pre, pre Intel chip era. Okay. Now they do, they do have the Intel chip. But I, will, it, will it run on a, it won't run on a uh, IBM computer, will it? It will? Macintosh, okay. Yeah, Macintosh. Hackintosh? Packintosh. Hack. Okay. It's all on television. Hackintosh, okay. But there's the other, you, we don't get to go to God and say, okay, you know, I don't like this thing about I got to believe in Jesus and I got to live according to your word, I'm, but I want to go to heaven. It doesn't work. And besides, your flesh is going to mess it up anyway. And I know they got people rewriting the Greek and I got the new people, you know, going back and, and, and coming up with new word studies after two millennia of, of, of Greek and Latin and, you know, uh, studying the scripture. Now they're going to rewrite it and say, well, that word really means this now in 2000 and, you know, uh, 15. Oh, the word really means this because it, 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 it lets you get away with your sin. You don't get to get away with your sin. Okay? You, and then why, why would you want to trust your flesh anyway? It's messed up. Okay? So Paul says three things. Um, we are the circumcised of the heart. Remember this word means the circumcised. We worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. Four things. Uh, well, well, he says we're one thing, and then he tells us three things we do with that. We worship God in the Spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we don't put our confidence in the unregenerated nature. Though I might now listen, to Paul says here because you know Paul often had to make an argument because people would come in and start saying stuff. Now listen, we got people come in church saying stuff today. Are you here? They come in and they brag about their this and that's just like you know. Well, just just for example, the Metropolitan Community Church. It's quote the homosexual church, which you think, because Ichabod's all over the door. 
Just say, the Spirit of God ain't there. I say at the party, I don't know if he ever showed up. Other than try to lead him to the Lord, but if they, they, they think they can live like they want to live and still go to heaven, I got news for you, you don't get to do it. And, uh, but you know, um, Paul was always having to deal with people coming into the church and bringing doctrines into the church that were unscriptural. And then they would challenge his authority. Who does Paul think he is? I mean, you know, I mean, he sits over there in another city and writes letters and you have to listen to Paul. You know, they, it's like they didn't read about Miriam and Aaron. Hello? Remember Miriam and Aaron? Moses is going around and, and, and Moses stuttered. As far as in the natural, Moses wasn't as qualified as other people may have been. Moses was a stutterer. And so when he was, God was going to send him to Pharaoh, he's like, well, you know, I can't go do that. And he says, well, Aaron will speak for you. And so they get out there. Moses is leading them all over the place. And Mary and Aaron get a little cocky. And they go, hey, who's Moses? God speaks to us too. How'd that work out for him? Because the next thing God shows up and says, yeah, I do. But I speak to Moses face to face. And then Miriam was struck with leprosy. And had to be put without the camp. And Moses, the one they were railing against, had to go intercede to get her, get her uh, delivered from leprosy and brought back in. Hello? Well, Paul's dealing with this stuff. Paul deals with stuff. People, you know, talking about his stature and talking about this and different things about him and, you know, mocking him. And Paul just finally, you know, he gets fed up with it every once in a while and just says, Hey, look, I don't have any confidence in the flesh, but let me tell you, pal, I was circumcised the eighth day. I'm not a proselyte. I was a born a Jew. Okay? Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Now see, I'm not a Greek-speaking Hebrew called Hellenist. Most, most Jews didn't speak Greek anymore. I mean, a Hebrew anymore, they spoke Greek. Paul said, hey, you're a Hellenist. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I speak Hebrew. Why? Because he said he heard him speak in the Hebrew tongue. <laughs> he knew Hebrew. All right? I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Um, as touching the law, I'm a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuted the church. Touching righteousness, which is of the law, blameless. Now, wait a second. He, they're coming in trying to bring their credentials in there to get people to listen. And Paul said, hey, pal, here's me. I was circumcised the eighth day. I'm not a Hellenist. I'm a Jewish-speaking Jew. I got all the zeal. I lived according to the law. I persecuted the church. Hello? I'm out of the tribe of Benjamin, pal. In other words, my credentials outdo yours. It's like me coming in going, hey, pal, I, I got a BA. And somebody says, I got a PhD. I got an MD. I got, you know, start listing off all their stuff. I'm ranked number two in the world in Greek studies, number three in the world in Hebrew studies. And by the time they get done, you look like an idiot. And that's what Paul was doing. He was going to say, hey, look, you want to come in and bring your credentials in here. You want to come here and talk about what you have and all you know. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. And, and in another place, it talks, about, it talks about the fact he studied at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the most uh, revered uh, philosophers of the day in concerning, uh, you know, the Greek Jewish history and so forth. Hello? So my credentials outweigh yours, buddy. But, listen to this. I like what Paul says. But what things were gained to me, in other words, all those credentials, I count as loss for Christ. They don't matter. Okay? Um, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency. Hello? Of the knowledge of Jesus Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. We all know what dung is, don't we? It's the poo-poo pile. Okay? He said, everything that I had before, it's just the fertilizer hill. It's the dung hill. You don't want to step in it by mistake. Hello? Everything that I'd accomplished in the natural, everything that I'd accomplished in my life, I was circumcised the eighth day. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a more Pharisee. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I had zeal. I lived according to the law. But I, all that means nothing, and I count it but dung, waste, 
poo poo. Le poo poo. <laughs> Say it with French accent, it sounds better. Le poo poo. Le poo poo. Le poo poo. All right. I count it as mere waste and refuse that I might win Christ. None of that stuff means anything. When it comes to where we stand in position in Christ Jesus, forget who you, your arguments, forget about this argument, forget about what you have, forget about all your credentials. In Christ, we stand in him. I gain Christ. I don't care about all of this other stuff. It doesn't get me any interest into heaven. It doesn't establish me in a higher place. It doesn't make me a better Christian. I have to have Christ and Christ alone. Can you say amen? And he said that I may win Christ, next verse, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness. Paul says, look, I don't want mine. Mine is as filthy rags. Isn't he one who wrote and quoted, and quoted the Old Testament over in Romans? He says, there's none righteous, no one. They're, they're, they're all gone away. Their mouth is full of poison. You know, the righteousness is as filthy rags. He goes on and says this. He says, I'm not, I want to be found in Christ not with my righteousness, which is of the, the law. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now Paul's laid out all his credentials. And if anybody could argue his case on being able to get to heaven because of who he was in the natural, it was Paul. But Paul said, I counted his loss, but done. Because I need the righteousness which is by faith. And I can only find that in Christ Jesus. Can you say Amen. And that, and then, then that place, in that place of righteousness, which comes by faith, Paul says this, that I may know him, glory to God, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Praise the Lord. Can you say glory be to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul realized his earth, that, that um, his earth life did not end. Hallelujah. He still had to live with present realities. You face stuff. People, you face stuff. There are battles to face and to win. Amen. You might, some people, you know, sometimes we get, up, we get off, you know, I don't, have any, I, I don't have any battles to face. Uh, why have you got to fight the good fight of faith? If there ain't no battles, you don't need to fight. I know Paul, God said in the Old Testament, stand you still see, uh, you shall not need to fight this battle. You know, the Lord will go out before you. Let me say something here. That was, that was a word for that thing. That's not a word we can carry everywhere. Why? Because we're told to fight the good fight of faith. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world. There are things to fight. There are things you've got to deal with. And you have to fight the good fight of faith. Well, I've entered into faith. I've entered into rest. Entered into the rest from what? Your own ability. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Why do you have weapons if you don't have to deal with stuff? You know, it's no, it's no, you've, when you've rested, when you've entered into faith, and you've entered into rest, you've entered into the rest of doing it in your ability. Do you get that? When you've entered into the rest, we call it faith. The faith walk is a good fight. You have to fight battles with your faith. But you've rested from human effort and human ability. Now you're trusting in the armor of God. You're trusting in the equipping of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We've rested from doing it in the flesh. We now fight the battles with the weapons of our warfare that have been given to us in the spirit. And we fight spiritual battles by faith. Amen. Don't, don't get into Christian science, says science. There's not a devil out there. Boom! What happened? The devil just knocked your head off. Hello? Now see, we, we charismatic word of faith people, and I, I was right there in the best of them. See, I grew up, I grew up Pentecostal. 
got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, then, then got sent to Ramah, came out of the Pentecostals over into the charismatic word of faith. Now let me say something here. Charismatic Pentecostals, you just shake them up and dump them out, they look the same. Except maybe for the hairdo. Hallelujah. I mean, but, you know, Pentecostals and charismatic doctrinally and, and, and exercising the gifts of the Spirit are very, 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 very similar. Okay? Unless you get what we call charismatics are people who came out of the Episcopal, the Lutheran, the Baptist, uh, your other churches who got filled with the Holy Ghost and started operating the gifts of the Spirit, but they didn't want to go back into a mainline denomination. It's like going back into a Pentecostal church, so they started kind of a move called the Charismatics, and they started Charismatic churches, but they had the gifts of the Spirit, they had manifestation of the Holy Ghost, they had tongues, interpretation, tongues laying on. I mean, he gifts of healing, they had working in mirror, had all the same thing going on in the Pentecostal church. They used to want to be labeled Pentecostals. You're a Pentecostal. Or Pentecostals are charismatic. It doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're believing in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, um, where was I going with that? Y'all know where I was going with that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get, we, we would get, we get a, a hold of a little bit of truth and run off of that little bit of truth and do squirrely stuff. We just do. Instead of settling down and getting the whole, we want to get a little bit. Woo! And we're like car running around. Trust in me. Trust in me. Woo! The eyes spinning. Y'all do watch Jungle Book, don't you? Who's never seen the Jungle Book? Raise your hand. You've never seen the Jungle Book? Come out, thou unclean spirit. All right. Bill, you did not show him the jungle book. <laughs> Have you never seen Jungle Book? Okay. You ask your dad, he's seen it. All right. Look for those bears. All right, anyway. But we'll take things and we'll hear a part and we'll run off with it. You know, I confess, I got, I can, you know, you, I can have what you say. You say, well, listen, you read Brother Hagin's book, you can have what you say. There's more to it than the title. Catch your title, but the book has more in it than the title. Number one, you can't have my wife. Why? I'll shoot you. In love. I'm going to keep you from going to hell. Hello. I'm going to send you to heaven early. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, we, we grab certain phrases or certain elements of something, and we don't take the whole. Like, just like I was talking about earlier, you know, he, he has entered into faith, has entered into rest. Well, it's not that you don't, you, you're not going to go get in a hand and have somebody wave a big palm leaf over top of you and bring you, you know, uh, uh, tropical drinks. You know, uh, like on, on, on the uh, Royal Caribbean Island uh, down there in the Bahamas, Bahamas uh, 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 Coco Cay, they bring you Coco Locos, which is a mixture of all kinds of fruit, tropical fruit juices in an icy, slushy kind of thing. Make you slobber. It's good. You know, it's non-alcoholic, okay? But it's, it is amazing. It's got all these tropical fruit juices in there. And just, oh, God. That's not what we talk. That's not what the Bible says we enter in the faith. That's not what it's talking about. When we enter in the rest, that's not what it's talking about. When it says, that, you know, um, when we start talking about, that, you know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. No, we don't. We do have to wrestle against principalities, powers, mights, rulers, and darkness of this world. We have to fight our battle with the word of God. And we'll start making confessions that aren't biblical. I'm never going to have another trouble with the devil the rest of my life. Now, now remember, now remember the Brother Hagin's told that story? He said, um, so some lady came and said, Brother Hagin, will you pray with me? Well, what about? Well, I wanted you to pray I'd never have any more trouble with the devil. He said, what you want me to do? Pray that you die? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if you're not, they said, what do you mean? He said, well, if you're not going to have any more trouble with the devil, you need, you're just going to have to die. Well, I don't want to die, then, you know. See, that's an unscriptural prayer. 
You can't even confess that. But people do stuff like that. I'm not, I confess that I don't have any trouble with the devil evermore. No, the Bible did not say confess you won't have any trouble with the devil ever again. It said put on the whole armor of God that so when he shows up, you're ready to deal with him. That's what the word says. You can't confess something the word doesn't promise you. It doesn't work that way. So you can't confess, I'm not going to have any trouble with the devil. Well, God says, now look, I gave you the armor to put it on so when he shows up, you can deal with it. Well, I don't like that. I'm confessing I don't have any trouble. Well, go ahead and confess it, stupid. Hello? And let me tell you, and then come back to me in a couple years' time how that worked out for you. Well, I didn't have any trouble with the devil. Well, why did you go bankrupt? Why did your car get wrecked? Why did your house get burned down? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Uh, I don't receive any of that. That's a bad testimony. No. Put on the armor of God and fight and win your battles. Hello. You, we gotta get we got to get scriptural about what we do. Okay? Y'all here? We have to, we, if, we, if we're not scriptural, we'll get out of balance. Everybody say we'll get out of balance. Okay? So Paul says here, he wanted to be, uh, know the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, that if by any means he might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. This is this next verse. Not as though I already attain, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to be, have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth I, and, and to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul said something really interesting here. If you'll, you'll listen to some of our people in our circles, I'm already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I've got everything settled. I'm just waiting to go home. I just, whenever Jesus comes back, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. I don't have to obey. I don't have to walk. I don't have to confess. I don't have to do, you know, because I'm already perfected. No, you're not perfected. Now, I remember when I was at Rhema, um, we had one of our teachers. Now, you know, how many of you ever have seen, or at least seen the title of Dad Hagen's book, Growing Up Spiritually? We had a teacher in the classroom teaching that we were already full grown when we got born again. That was his last year. Because <laughs> people, some people may not know, apparently he, he wasn't, didn't care or didn't think they were doing it. As all the classes 